to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, another in my series of heavy thoughts. This is where I take a moment to ramble on for a bit about some things that have been on my mind. And what I've been thinking about lately is the mystique and mystery and suspense around bands and albums. Is it gone? What got me thinking about this is often when I'm talking to uh, people who discovered music, were discovering music before the internet and, and before MTV and all that stuff, we'll often talk about how there was a real mystery and unknown element and mystique and uh, suspense around bands and their releases and stuff. And how because of that, it it caused our imaginations to run wild. The lack of information on bands, it caused us to sort of create our own stories and our own narratives. I mean, I remember Kiss, you know, when I was younger, the, the, the makeup and everybody talking about like, man, who's behind the makeup and the mystery behind the band. And uh, the only way you could see them live was is you had to go to a show. You, you, you couldn't, uh, you know, there was no YouTube. There was no... VHS is at that point. So you would just hear these stories about Gene Simmons blowing fire and spitting blood and all this other stuff. And it created all this sort of mystery in your head. I remember uh, one of the very first things I ever bought with my own money was Kiss's uh, Dr. Love on a little seven inch single. And there's a point in the song where Gene goes like, ha, ah! he makes this sound. And I played it for some friends. And then one kid was like, my brother, my, my, my brother has this song, and he told me that's when he spits blood. When he goes, ha, ah, he's spitting the blood out. And, you know, I was seven years old or whatever at the time. And it was, all of us in the room, we were like, yeah, that, that's probably right. You know, because we didn't know any different. But this lack of information, it created this sort of excitement around this kind of stuff. Uh, I did a, a podcast episode on Into the Void, a Black Sabbath podcast with my good friend Darren. And we were talking about Ozzy's Blizzard of Oz and how we had some Sabbath albums up to that point, but we really didn't know what Ozzy looked like. I had Paranoid, he was, in, he was on the inside of that. But when I saw the album cover for Blizzard of Oz, I was floored because I had never really seen many or really any pictures of Ozzy. I didn't really know what he looked like, which is crazy to think about that today. But so it was so cool to see these pictures of the bands and uh, to, to, to maybe get some information on the album cover or a live shot on the back of an album or something like that. And I didn't even, where I grew up, I didn't even really have access to uh, magazines. It wasn't until maybe like 84 or something like that after we had gotten MTV and everything where I started seeing Hit Parader and Circus. And then I was able to see like pictures of ACDC and Ozzy and stuff like that. But I remember like, oh, uh, uh, getting some ACDC records and, and you know, not know, really knowing what Bond looked like and seeing pictures of him in magazines. It was like, whoa, you know, I remember seeing a picture of him with his, you know, vest, jean jacket vest, no shirt on. And I would then go home and listen to my albums and imagine, man, that's what he looked like on stage and everything. And, and this lack of information, it, it, it caused us to sort of insert our own stories into, into things. And, for us to uh, create, our, our, have their, our, our own like very unique personal experiences with these albums. Uh, back to Black Sabbath. I remember when I got Never Say Die. Uh, it was uh, the last Ozzy uh, era album that I needed. And at that time, I ha knew nothing about that record. I only knew it was the last album with Ozzy. I had never read a review of it. No one had ever told me anything about it. So I went into it with a clean slate and just took it in and made my own thoughts and opinions on it. It isn't like nowadays with the internet where there's all these lists and reviews and everybody, you know, stories form around certain albums like Never Say Die is a terrible album. And so if you're some kid that's just getting into this, uh, you're going to have these things in the back of your head like, oh man, this is like supposed to be the worst Ozzy era album and you're going to go into it with these things and rather, rather than you being able to sort of form your own opinions around it and your own, uh, you know, shape, create your own stories in your, in your head, it's, it's sort of, a lot of that is taken away 
thanks to the internet. You know, I imagine maybe there's some teenage kid out there that he, he watches the Marvel Iron Man movie and he hears Iron Man, the song Iron Man and that, and he goes on his computer and he looks it up. And there's you know, hundreds of versions of them playing it live on YouTube, the studio versions. There's, there's millions of pictures of Black Sabbath and Google. There's Wikipedia and there's millions of interviews and everything. And I mean, maybe these kids experience it in a different way. But for me, back, back it, when I was younger, there was something really sort of special about not knowing anything about these artists and talking to friends like, oh, my older, I have an older brother and he saw Ozzy live and he said it was crazy, you know. Or I, I remember people talking about Alice Cooper, like, oh, there's a guillotine and there's all this craziness on stage and you're in your head thinking like, whoa, this is like trying to imagine all this craziness, Kiss live, you know, that was just the same thing. And uh, nowadays, it just none of that really exists. It's almost impossible to create any sort of mystery or mystique around a band or an album or any sense of anticipation. Uh, I remember walking into record stores and just being like, oh, wow, Judas Priest has a new record, you know, or here's a new Rush album, okay, you know. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, months of people talking about things and you reading about it. It was just sort of like, you just goes like, whoa, here's a new, new Judas Priest record, you know, and you just get so excited about it. And I think now a lot of that has gotten taken away and uh, it's very hard to create that now. And I think Iron Maiden did this a little bit. I felt a little bit of this when, uh, for their new album, Senjutsu, they, if you remember, released, they were uh, sort of teasing this thing, Belsazar's Feast, this like poster, and people didn't know what it meant. Bruce, I think, had a shirt on with it on, and everybody's like trying to figure out what this means. They were trying to interpret some of the things that were written on it. And, uh, and that album sort of came out of nowhere, it felt like. It was just like all of a sudden Iron Maiden announced they released a new record. And like a few weeks later, writing on the wall, the video showed up and it was all sort of very quick and thus it created this sort of energy and excitement about it that I think was really cool. Another band that captured this for a little while was Ghost. If you remember when they first came out, they sort of came out of nowhere and no one knew who they were. The guys had masks on, the Pope, you know, with his makeup on and everything. And there was some real people were talking for a while, like who are they, where did they come from? And all that created excitement. It got people talking, it got people imagining and wondering and they're, you know, thinking in their heads, what is this about? Where is this from? And I think that that's really, really cool. And I think it, that it's something that's missing in music today. Too much information is almost a bad thing. There's no, nowadays people expect their artists to just be completely accessible. You know, you're, you're watching, they're tweeting what they ate for lunch and you're watching videos of them and constantly in the studio and whatever. And you go on YouTube and you can just see so many live shows. And it just, it, it's, in my opinion, it has taken away some of the uh, some of the excitement around artists and around bands and maybe it's just me being the old guy on the porch you know back in my day you know we had to picture the concert in our head in our own minds you know I didn't have a million pictures of Ozzy I only had two you know maybe I'm just an old man or something but I, I think that uh, you know I, I think that music nowadays it's something that i really miss about it and i know when i talk to other people around my age who grew up around the same time that they say the same things they really miss like the they really miss a lot of these these elements in music the mystery and the mystique and the excitement of going going to a concert you know i was watching fast times at ridgemont high and i forget what the character's name is that's selling tickets to shows all the time and he's like you know i got tickets for cheap trick and everything and you know oh you gotta go see the band and you know it was so exciting to see a band live and, and unfortunately with mtv and i talked about mtv in one of my other videos did uh, some of that you know that started taking that away and then of course with the internet it just in my opinion completely disappeared so so what do you guys think? Uh, what are your memories of those early days? I always enjoy listening to people tell stories 
Uh, what are your memories of that before the internet, uh, discovering bands, uh, imagining it in your head, uh, wondering what the concerts were like, going to concerts, discovering albums, seeing pictures of your favorite artists for the first time and stuff like that. You know, give me some stories down below in the comments because I always enjoy uh, when you guys talk about that. So uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments about, uh, do you remember those days? Do you think the mystery and everything, the mystique and suspense, is it all gone or is there still some left in this day and age of the internet? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Till we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.